My dad likes to talk about how, because we're both very Irish, we both have the gift of gab, meaning we like to tell very long-winded stories. And while I can be a little bit quiet, I'm a little bit more on the shyer side, when I do talk, more often than not, it's to tell a story. And that's probably why I decided to go into filmmaking. I just graduated, I got my BFA in documentary, um, and more specifically, I finished what you could basically consider to be my capstone project. It's a nine minute short film that took me two years to make. Um, and it looks a little bit something like this. <laughs> I've heard it said before that when a person transitions, everybody else in their life goes through a transition around them. I came out to my parents as trans when I was 13 years old, a little while before your average household knew what that word really meant. And since then, as it so often goes, I have told my coming out story more times than I can count. But over the past few years, I have been plopping my parents down in front of a camera to try to hear it from their perspective. Because ever since the beginning, it hasn't really been just my coming out story. It's been ours. Now, making a personal documentary is a very specific experience. It's rewarding in a lot of unique ways, and it's also uniquely challenging. And while I'm sure a lot of you are not filmmakers, probably most of you aren't, uh, everyone in this room does have a story that's worth sharing. And I think it would be a shame if you never had the opportunity to share it. So over the course of the next eight minutes or so, I'm gonna talk about some of the greatest lessons I learned in telling my story in the hopes that I can encourage you to tell yours. Starting with the fact that questions are a lot more interesting than answers. Part of the reason this documentary took so long to make is that I started looking at it from the completely wrong direction. I knew what I wanted to talk about, but I didn't yet know what I wanted to learn from the experience. I knew I wanted to advocate for trans youth. I wanted to show that transitioning doesn't have to be traumatic or scary, and that parental support or even family and community support can make all of the difference when a young person is exploring their gender identity. But I didn't yet have something that filmmakers call the essential question. Now, the essential question is basically the anchor for your film. So as you're exploring your scenes, your dialogue, your characters, you can always turn back to that essential question. And as long as you're exploring it in a new or unique way, you know you're basically going in the right direction. Now, it took a lot of experimenting, a lot of journaling, um, a lot of interviews, but after a while I realized I already knew a lot about my transition from my perspective, but I didn't know what that experience was like from the viewpoint of my parents. And that was something that I wanted to learn a lot more about. So I decided my essential question would be this. What can a parent do when their child wants something or needs something that scares them? And once I had that, everything just kind of started to fall into place. Talking about ourselves is easy. You can say what you do for a living, you can discuss your favorite hobbies or interests, you can gush about your favorite people or places, but asking about ourselves and asking the questions we don't have answers to yet, maybe because the possibilities of certain answers scare us, that's a lot harder. But finding those questions is the first step in telling your story and molding that story, whether it's through video, photo, writing, whatever format suits you best, is the first step in answering them. Telling your own story is an excavation of yourself. Now, the next thing I learned is that while emotional work is really, really hard, it's also the most important work out there. Have you ever written emotional labor on a checklist? Or have you ever put battle with inner demons underneath by your groceries? <laughs> I know before I had started this process, I certainly hadn't but making a personal documentary pushed me to view self-improvement as its own kind of work. It was a part of the filmmaking process. And one of the hardest decisions I had to make was whether or not I was going to include the name I was assigned at birth in the final cut. There were a lot of things about that name that I hadn't come to terms with yet. There were a lot of obstacles involved in that name for me. So I wasn't ready to deal with it as a filmmaker and as a professional. It's said in the final film five times, and it appears on screen once, you saw it, but it took me two years to be okay with that. And that was part of making my film. It was a part of the work. Deciding to take an active role in telling your own story requires a lot of emotional labor. 
every protagonist is going to have flaws, every arc is going to have conflicts, every ending is going to have themes, and if you aren't looking for where those things manifest for you, it can take your whole life to find them. But telling your own story pushes you to deal with a lot of personal stuff, a lot of that internal garbage you've just kind of been like letting sit and not dealing with for a very long time. And it's all in the name of growth. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be able to look at yourself in the mirror with all of your flaws and your insecurities, and we all have them, and still see a really great story. And that's a powerful personal experience that we all deserve to have. Now, this next one's a little bit difficult for me to talk about because I spent a lot of money on my degree in documentary, but we're all documentarians. I mean, we take photos and videos of ourselves constantly and post them online. Every Facebook profile is an archive of an entire lifetime. It's an interactive documentary at your fingertips. It's the components for telling a story, they just haven't been put together yet. And how you piece those puzzle pieces together is where your voice and your message comes through. I directed my film, Our Transition, I also shot it, and I edited it, and I don't know if I'd recommend that because it was exhausting. But understand that you're the only one who can tell your story your way. Nobody else is going to put the love and care into your story that you will. In documentary, we have this term called access. It's a logistical term, so can you get to where you need to go in order to film? Do you have the location agreements and the waivers to do so legally? But it's also an emotional term. Is a subject willing to give you the access to their personal life, to their loved ones, to their successes and failures? It can take a long time to get that level of trust with somebody, but we have unlimited access to ourselves as long as we're willing to do the work and to share the things that matter and be open enough to do so. And once we do that, we have the ability to tell our story more intimately and more powerfully than anybody else can. One of the last big lessons I learned and the last I'm gonna share with you today is that stories take a long time. The documentary about my life is nine minutes long and it took me two years to make. But at one of the first screenings I had the opportunity to attend, a father came up to me and told me that watching it reminded him of the love he feels for his newborn daughter. And whether that means that one day she comes to him with something about her identity that she's afraid to share and he listens, or whether he just loves her a little bit harder, I know that my story is gonna live on a lot longer than I will and so can yours. I mean, we all have stories inside of us. Like, you know when you stay up a little bit too late with your friends and you're talking and then things get personal and then they get very personal and then all of a sudden you're just sharing these things you never thought you could? Like, that's the storyteller inside of you, just begging to get out. But before you can take that story from a 2 a.m. conversation where you were probably a little bit tipsy to a tool for making positive change, you just have to put the time in. Stories take time. Finding the questions you have yet to answer about yourself and the emotional labor it takes to answer them honestly takes a lot of time. So start now. Journal every day if you have to or start up that vlog or blog you always said you would do or start collecting old memories in order to reflect on them and understand them. I know our lives can get really busy between school or work, between friends and family, it can be easy to put ourselves on the back burner. But when all is said and done, and we leave this earth, all we're going to have is our stories. They're worth our time. So put the time in. Go up into the metaphorical attic of your own experiences, pull apart some cobwebs, take out some old boxes, and I think you'll be surprised by what kind of treasures you find. And I think all of us would love to hear about them. Thank you.